How did Sir Thomas More become a martyr? More, 1478-1535, was a lawyer by training. And beginning in 1517 he served King Henry VIII, who appointed him Lord Chancellor. In 1534 the British Parliament passed the Act of Succession, making the heirs to the English crown. The children of King Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, which resulted in Henry VIII's children from earlier marriages. Including Elizabeth, who was to become Queen Elizabeth I, being declared bastards. More refused to swear to the Act of Supremacy, which affirmed the act of succession. And so he was committed to the Tower of London, charged with treason, and beheaded. Moore had always stuck to his own principles while in high office. And his refusal has been generally interpreted as an expression of his belief that Henry VIII had overstepped his royal prerogatives. First in declaring himself head of the Church of England. So that he could seize church lands and marry Anne Boleyn, and then in interfering with the royal succession. Moore's last words were, the king's good servant, but God's first. Moore was beatified. By the Catholic Church in 1886 and canonized as a saint by Pope Pius XI in 1935. Was Pierre Joseph Proudhon a friend of Karl Marx? Very briefly. To whom is Berkeley's idealism perplexing? To those who continue to cleave to the reality of the perceived existence of an external world. Berkeley's idealism can be perplexing. It is also a problematic position for many scientists. Who must believe in an objective reality in order for their work concerning objective facts to make sense. What are the philosophical issues about racial identity? They come down to the question of whether African Americans should envision themselves and their communities as race-specific or generically American. Traditionally, strong racial or ethnic identities have developed among members of oppressed groups. Sometimes based on the very things that are used against them by racists. On the other hand, Strong racial identities among disadvantaged groups may prevent young people from aspiring to and achieving success in a dominant white society. Beyond these pragmatic concerns is a current consensus that all social and psychological racial identities are socially constructed, rather than biologically determined. What was W? V. O. Quine's attack on the analytic synthetic distinction? In Two Dogmas of Empiricism, published in the journal The Philosophical Review, 1951. 
Quine began with the accepted view that analytic statements are true based only on the meaning of the words they contain. There is nothing in the world that can affect the truth of an analytic statement. Synthetic statements are factual claims about the world. Quine then showed how it is impossible to define analyticity without a prior notion of sameness of meaning that itself presupposes analyticity. What this means is that unless you already know what analytic means you will not understand any definition of it. Or that analytic cannot be defined without circularity. If we do not know what analyticity is, there is a strong implication that for all practical purposes all of our beliefs are in some sense synthetic and subject to revision based on experience. The second dogma of empiricism that Quine attacked in the same article was the prevailing view that statements in a theory all face reality one by one. Quine claimed that all of the statements face reality together. Here, Quine meant that a whole theory or account of the world gets confirmed at once. Rather than parts of the theory being confirmed separately. Who is Daniel C? Dennett? Daniel C. Dennett, 1942, is an American philosopher of mind and science. He is professor of philosophy at Tufts University and co-director of the Center for Cognitive Studies there. He has been influential in combining cognitive science and evolutionary theory in philosophy of biology. Most notably in these works, Darwin's Dangerous Idea, Evolution and the Meanings of Life, 1996. Kinds of Minds, Towards an Understanding of Consciousness, 1997, Brain Children, Essays on Designing Minds. Representation and Mind, 1998, Freedom Evolves, 2003, Sweet Dreams, Philosophical Obstacles to a Science of Consciousness. 2005, and Breaking the Spell, Religion as a Natural Phenomenon, 2006. Dennett is also a supporter of the Brights Movement. What was Charles Pierce's fourth system? Pierce's fourth system, 1885 to 1914, introduced evolution to his second system. The whole system of sign-object interpreton, with its infinite implications, is an evolving system. The system has evolved over time and continues to evolve. As does our knowledge of it, and every sign within it. Pierce worked out many details of this process, in logic, and in what others considered pragmatism. He ended up with an extreme form of idealism that posited the entire universe as a living. Feeling organism, with habits that are mirrored in our general laws of nature, descriptions of regularities. What is Peter Abelard known for in philosophy? Peter Abelard 
1079-1149, was the French theologian who wrote Theologia Christiana. An attempt to use logic for explaining Christian dogmas. His expertise in logic drew students from all over Europe. He was the first scholastic to write about Aristotle's on interpretation, together with Boethius. 480 C 525, Commentary on this work. Abelard made a distinction between the meaning of an expression what it names and the idea in the mind of a speaker who uses the expression. He did not think that words signify the images in the minds of their speakers. Meanings are what true or false sentences say or signify, which lies outside the minds of their speakers. The distinctions in Abelard's innovative philosophical theory of Reference remain relevant to contemporary philosophers of language. How did Locke use natural law to construct a theory of government? In the first treatise on government, 1689, Locke argued against English political theorist Robert Filmer, who claimed that kings, in a direct descent from Adam, had divine rights. Locke pointed out that it was impossible to trace such a direct descent with any accuracy. That human beings had female as well as male parents and that political power was fundamentally different from patriarchal power. In the second treatise on government, 1689, he identified natural law as God's laws for man, which included the command that man labor for his living. God had given the earth and everything on it to all mankind. Locke therefore asked how it came to be that there was private property, which was necessary to make use of the fruits of the earth. His answer was that whatever an individual mixes his labor with he comes to own. Locke used the term mixes labor with for labor, in cases where we today would say works on. Locke went on to claim that, in the state of nature, there were two provisos against accumulation through labor. That there be as much and as good left over, and that there be no waste. The first proviso assumed that natural resources would never run out. The second allowed for the store of unused items in precious objects that could be used as money thereby allowing surplus production to be stored as wealth without the original producer being wasteful. In Locke's state of nature there was industry, cooperation, and trade. Human beings were basically peaceful, except for a few criminals. To assure justice in punishment, government was necessary but it was merely a convenience added to a generally functional and satisfying situation. Who was William of Exum? William of Exum, C. 1280 C. 1349, known as the more than subtle doctor, was a Franciscan monk. He studied theology at Oxford and developed a strong expertise in logic, which may have led to his foundational empirical insights. Empiricism, 
as a doctrine independent of theology. Was not widely accepted by medieval scholastic philosophers, so neither was the principle that came to be known as axum's razor. Plurality is not to be assumed without necessity. In its modern form in science, axum's razor is a rule for parsimony and simplicity in the construction of theories and against commitment to more entities than are strictly necessary for the explanation of data or observations. Exum's empiricism also applied to universals, and he rejected all claims to their reality. The only real things, according to Exum, were existent particulars. He held that universals were the names of concepts, a doctrine called conceptualism. He asserted that there was no willed causation in nature, which entailed that even God could not interfere in physical causal laws. Although Aksum did believe that God could intervene in human cognition, Who influenced George Berkeley? According to Berkeley, our ideas of sense are real ideas so long as we perceive them. And in our perception of them, we are doing no more than in some way participating in what God has created. In that way, Berkeley's notion of the world is an expansion of the doctrine of occasionalism. Propounded by Nicholas Malebranche, 1638-1715, in the 17th century. And brought to an epiphany by Gottfried Leibniz, 1646-1716, through his notion of pre-established harmony. According to that doctrine and Berkeley's embellishment of it, God does all the real work. From which we, because we have been created by him along with the rest of his creation, benefit. Berkeley thus extended the presence of God in human cognition. As something like a force constituting reality itself. Nonetheless, he endures as an empiricist due to his emphasis on sense data as a component. Of knowledge never mind that for Berkeley, sense data were not signs or indications of what philosophers and the vast majority of non-philosophers call an external world, or reality. For Berkeley, sense data were neither real objects in themselves nor signs of an external world, but ideas, created by God and placed in us. Period. What is Bertrand Russell's theory of types? Russell began with a puzzle inspired by the German philosopher Gottlob Freyes. 1848 to 1925, attempt to reduce mathematics to logic. Is the class of all classes that are not members of themselves, or C, itself a member of itself? This question seems valid, but Russell showed that it leads to contradictions. If C is a member of itself then it should not be in D which is the class of classes that are not members of themselves, but if C is a member of itself, it will be in D. But if C is not a member of itself, then it should be in D, and C is a member of itself. Russell's answer was that there is a hierarchy of types. Of things that restricts what can be said about them. 
so we can say that Russell is an analytic philosopher. But not that a group of people are an analytic philosopher. Who were the main defenders of sense knowledge at the beginning of modern science? Jean Bowden, 1530-1596, and Pierre L. E. Lawyer, 1559-1634, offered defenses of sense. Knowledge between 1581 and 1605 they held that even though sense knowledge is sometimes unreliable, its errors are corrected by further sensory experience. By the 1620s two priests highly influential in both scientific and intellectual circles. Fathers Marin Mercenet, 1588-1658, and Pierre Gassendi, 1592-1655. Used Pyrrhonic anti Aristotelian arguments against Rosicrucianism and alchemy. What are some facts about Ludwig Wittgenstein's life? Quite a lot is known about Wittgenstein's life although not everything is completely understood. Some stories seem to be in the realm of legends. Wittgenstein was born in 1889 in Vienna, Austria, to a famous and wealthy family of Jewish ancestry. His paternal grandparents were Jews who converted to Protestantism. And his mother was Catholic although her father was of Jewish descent. Ludwig was the youngest of eight children, who were all exposed to high culture. Composer Johannes Brahms was a friend of the family. Although Ludwig was baptized as a Catholic, when he confessed his sins to friends later in life. Among his admitted transgressions was the fact that he allowed others to assume he was not Jewish. Ludwig had four brothers, three of whom committed suicide. When his father died in 1913, Ludwig inherited a vast fortune, which he gave away. In 1938, after Germany annexed Austria, he was able to protect his sisters from being sent to concentration camps by giving the German government millions of dollars in gold. Wittgenstein's education included studying mechanical engineering in Berlin. In 1908 he moved to England to study aeronautics, which included experimenting with kites. This led to mathematics and then to philosophy. Insofar as it was a current pursuit to seek the foundations of mathematics in logic. A visit with the mathematician Gottlob Freya, 1848 to 1925, led Wittgenstein to meet Bertrand Russell. 1872 to 1970, at Cambridge University, where he studied logic with both G. E. Moore. 1873 to 1958, and Russell. But his studies were interrupted by World War I. During which he volunteered for the Austrian army and distinguished himself for bravery. Russell assisted Wittgenstein in publishing Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus, 1922. Wittgenstein then taught elementary school in a rural area of Austria and also designed and built a modernist house in Vienna for his sister Gridel. Returning to Cambridge in 1929, he taught philosophy. 
becoming a professor at Trinity College ten years later. He was a hospital porter during World War II and resigned his professorship in 1947. Moving to Ireland to write. Just before dying, he said, tell them I've had a wonderful life. Ray Monk's biography Wittgenstein, The Duty of Genius, 1991 is considered definitive as both an intellectual and personal account of Wittgenstein's life. Did the Eastern philosophers interact much with the St. Louis Hegelians? Although they were not academic philosophers, the St. Louis philosophers were in conversation with the Eastern transcendental thinkers, such as those of the Concord School of Philosophy, which had been organized by William Harris, 1835 to 1909, and transcendentalist Amos Bronson Alcott, 1799 to 1888. The Concord School held conferences during the summer from 1879 to 1887, and when Alcott first visited Harris in St. Louis, he was abused by Henry C. Brockmeyer, 1826 to 1906, in what the Hegelian observers called the first bout between East and West. The result was celebrated as a victory for the West. Another famed Eastern philosopher, Ralph Waldo Emerson, 1803 to 1882, also visited the St. Louis Philosophical Society. What was John Stuart Mill's view of logic and scientific methodology? Foremost, Mill argued that deductive logic does not depend on intuition for its proof, but rather on internal consistency. The foundational assumptions or axioms of all sciences are based on experience. Even the shared scientific axiom that nature is uniform or law-like is proved. Through simple enumeration of confirming examples, that is, through induction. More specific causal explanations do no more than summarize necessary and sufficient conditions. A necessary condition is always present when the effect occurs. The effect is always present when a sufficient condition is present. For example, a bullet to the brain is sufficient to cause death in most cases. But it is not necessary because people die from other causes. Or, oxygen is necessary to cause fire. But it is not sufficient because fire requires friction and combustible material, as well as oxygen. Mill also thought that the basic principles of arithmetic and geometry could be proved by induction. He agreed with Isidore Marie Auguste Francois Xavier Comte. 1798 1857, about a unified view of the social sciences. Whereby the laws for more general sciences could be derived from what is known about more specific sciences. For example, observations of individual human behavior could result in a science of psychology. And observations of individual psychology could result in a science of society or sociology. It should be noted that much subsequent theoretical work in 
mathematics and social science did not find Mill's ideas useful. What was William Wool's intuitionist moral philosophy? Wool, 1794-1866, claimed that conscience enables direct perception of moral goodness and badness. However, he did not describe conscience as a separate moral faculty but as reason exercised on moral subjects. Moral rules are primary principles of reason, discoverable by reason itself. He took them to be self-evident necessary truths. What is Daniel C. Dennett's philosophy of biology? Dennett 1942, engages evolutionary theory by asking the question, skyhooks or cranes? Skyhooks are unexplained leaps from one stage of development to the next. Whereas cranes are ways of understanding a later stage based on the design of an earlier one. Dennett has argued that consciousness, the contents of consciousness, and even the products of consciousness, such as Shakespeare's plays, can be naturalistically understood in the same way that physical evolution is understandable. Neural systems create multiple drafts of the same thing so that the brain itself is a sort of dung heap in which the larvae of other people's ideas renew themselves. Dennett is also a proponent of the doctrine of memes, whereby certain patterns of behavior are products of evolution that are physically inherited. His extreme materialism has attracted many critics, as well as supporters. Kant's motivating metaphysical question was How is it possible to know certain principles about the world, without prior experience? Kant's solution was to apply a transcendental deduction to such principles and show that without them experience would not be possible. For example, concerning causation, he argued that consciousness itself requires orderly experience based on necessary connections in reality. This was Kant's answer to David Hume's 1711-1776 reduction of causation to constant conjunction. He rejected Hume's skepticism that constant conjunction is all that there is by claiming that the world could only make sense to us if we assumed that that there were real causal connections in it. In his Prolegomena to Every Future Metaphysics, 1783, Kant famously said that Hume had awakened him from his dogmatic slumbers. Was the Ptolemaic theory merely a matter of religious faith? No. The idea that Earth was the center of the universe was not based just on religious belief. 
The Ptolemaic theory, constructed by Ptolemy, 90 to 168 CE, did a fairly good job of describing both. Sensory experience and astronomical records and calculations that went back several thousand years. The movements of the heavenly bodies, which were themselves believed to be made of different and more ethereal stuff than Earth. Could be more or less accurately predicted, according to this theory. It was also in accord with the existing natural philosophy that everything was made up of Earth. Water, fire, and air, in an ascending hierarchy. However, Ptolemy's assumption that Earth was stationary required a postulation. Of A.D. Epikicles to save the appearances. Which means that new complicated postulations were necessary to make the theory match observations. What have Western philosophers recognized in Buddhism? Buddhist thought rejects ideas of substance or substances as entities that endure through time and change. Speculation about the eternity of the world, its infinity. Or the connections between the soul or mind and the body are not considered worthwhile. In the Theravada schools of thought, perceptual experience is believed to justify mind independent entities. But we do not experience them directly. Some commentators hold that there are independent entities. Otherwise our inference from experience that they exist could not be justified. Furthermore, we do not control what we perceive. Which suggests that things exist outside of our perception. Others distinguish between reliable and unreliable sensory experience. Some Buddhists believe that both minds and bodies are collections of transitory perceptions. According to the Madhi Hamaka school, there can't be individual objects because everything is dependent on everything else. However, enlightenment can result in an awareness of an underlying reality behind or beyond this flux. The Yogacara branch of this school holds that because there are no minds, there is no one to see the truth and no way to discover it. Given the lack of substances, which would include minds, all that exist are mental states. Our lack of control over perception or the apparent Objectivity of things is merely the effect of our own memories. It should be evident at this point that Buddhism has grappled with the same kinds of questions about what really exists as those that have held the attention of Western philosophers throughout history. One difference is that, with the exception of ancient Stoicism and Epicureanism, and perhaps contemporary Buddhism, Western philosophers do not have life practices directly linked to their intellectual beliefs. Useful sources for philosophical comparison include Masao Abe and Stephen Hine, Zen, and Comparative Studies. 1997, Dan Lusthaus, Buddhist Phenomenology, A Philosophical Investigation of Yogacara Buddhism. 1997, and Anil Kumar Sarkar, Buddhism, and Whitehead's Process Philosophy, 1991. What is the story of Descartes' life?
René Descartes, 1596 to 1650, father was a member of the minor nobility. His mother died when he was 13 months old. And after his father remarried he was raised by his maternal grandmother. At 10 he was sent to the new Jesuit college of La Fleche in Anjou, France. And there studied the classics, history, rhetoric, and Aristotelian natural philosophy. Although he considered La Fleche an excellent school. He thought that the natural philosophy he learned there was doubtful, mainly because it was based on scholastic abstractions that had been outdated by more recent discoveries and thought. Descartes then took a law degree at Potiers and set off to complete his education by travel in Europe. He wrote that he had resolved to seek no knowledge other than that which could be found either in myself or the great book of the world. He served briefly in the army and then became friends with Isaac Beekman. 1588-1637, a Dutch philosopher and scientist who inspired him to study mathematics. Descartes' first book, Compendium Musici, applied mathematics to harmony and dissonance. Descartes also began work on his discovery of analytic geometry that was published in 1637. What was new in metaphysics and epistemology after logical positivism? Metaphysics and epistemology made a new empirical start that was thoroughly informed by science. P. F. Strawson, 1919-2006, defended a common-sense metaphysics, and, like Wilfred Sellers, 1912-1989, he developed the idea of a common perspective that was opposed to science. Strawson did much to reclaim for philosophy a common-sense approach to the world, which the logical positivists would have thought was meaningless, because it was not about science. Nelson Goodman, 1906-1998, resurrected the perennial problem of induction reasoning that begins with experience and builds toward knowledge. W. V. Oquine, 1908-2000 Uniquely redirected the course of 20th century philosophy by combining pragmatist insights with a rigorous philosophical method. Also, perhaps partly as a result of Quine's work, Hilary Putnam, 1926 reinterpreted pragmatist epistemology by applying its insights to questions of truth in the sciences. How was Johann Gottlieb Fichte's idealism connected to freedom? Fitch thought that our spontaneity is something we can become aware of through reflection on ourselves as active beings, who think, as well as do things in the world. This entails that the ultimate reality is a transcendental ego, a locus of pure activity. Following Kant, Fitch meant that behind the self of which a person is aware while thinking, there is an unperceived self. Fitch believed that maturity was required to realize this freedom of the self. Those who were immature would cling to dogmatism.
Has there been much progress in philosophy? Philosophy progresses in two ways. First, philosophical work mirrors the concerns of its historical time. For example, in the 17th century, when modern nations were forming, philosophers like John Locke 1632-1704, and Thomas Hobbes 1588-1679, wrote about the origins of modern, democratic government. In the 20th century, philosophers have applied ethics to new choices made possible by modern medicine. The second form of progress in philosophy consists of the growth of philosophical thought over time. This progression of philosophy is largely a conversation among philosophers who in one way or another are in dialogue with their historical predecessors, as well as their peers. What was the reaction to Burton's The Anatomy of Melancholy? Burton wrote The Anatomy of Melancholy under the pseudonym Democritus Jr. His book was well received. Literary historian and critic Thomas Wharton, 1728-1790, wrote of it. The author's variety of learning, his quotations from rare and curious books. His pedantry sparkling with rude wit and shapeless elegance have rendered it a repertory of amusement and information. Indeed, Burton's treatise is full of satire and it constitutes a prodigious display of historical and literary knowledge. However, the genius of Burton's anatomy lies in its attempt to give a naturalistic account of the mind as both distinct from the body and yet intimately connected with it. Burton's theory of human cognition and consciousness rests on his notion of spirit, through which all of the functions and faculties of mind are physically connected with different parts of the body. While mistaken and overly literal by more modern standards, Burton's general project of investigating mind-body correspondence remains a cornerstone of empirical mind-body and mind-brain scientific research to this day. What is moral theory? Moral theory is the intellectual assessment and comparison of different moral or ethical systems. For instance, if we compare consequentialism and deontology, then we are working within moral theory. To some extent, anyone who argues for their own moral system does some amount of moral theory. For example, Jeremy Bentham, 1748 to 1832, in his dismissal of human rights as nonsense upon stilts, wanted to replace discourse about rights with calculations about pleasure. And Immanuel Kant, 1724 to 1804, in distinguishing between hypothetical and categorical judgments and elevating the latter were both engaged in moral theory. What was Sigmund Freud's interpretation of hysteria? At first, Freud, 
along with his mentor Joseph Brewer. Advanced the hypothesis that people suffering from hysterics have buried memories of trauma. Treatment consisted in recovering those memories and a cathartic. Discharge of the affect or emotion associated with them at the outset. Freud thought that the source of the repression was sexual molestation by male relatives. He revised this seduction theory when he realized that if the sole cause of hysteria was repressed memories, there was no reason why it should not resolve itself by being discharged in hysterical. Symptoms Taking a page from Franz Brentano, and perhaps Alexius Menon, 1853-1920, as well. He theorized that it could be fantasy revealing itself in the form of repressed desires that was the key. This led to Freud's Oedipal Theory. Did Hume believe that we have free will? Yes, Hume believed in free will, but in a strange way. He argued that our freedom is based on the fact that we are determined by our existing character. If there were no causal link between our motives and our actions, then there would be no moral basis for praise and blame. That is, we do not praise or blame others for what they do accidentally or as flukes. For Hume, freedom therefore consists in the liberty to do what we want, or a lack of constraint. Our spontaneity is not the same as indifference, or the lack of a cause for doing one thing or the other. He wrote, by liberty, then, we can mean a power of acting or not acting. According to the determinations of the will. Now this hypothetical liberty is. Universally allowed to belong to everyone who is not a prisoner and in chains. Who is Lucira Gray? Luce Ira Gray, 1932, was born in Belgium and attended Jacques Lacan's psychoanalytic seminars in the 1960s. She is famous for having written, Sexual difference is probably the issue in our time which could be our salvation if we thought it through, and one must assume the feminine role deliberately which means already to convert a form of subordination into an affirmation, and thus to thwart it. Ira Gray's main writings include An Ethics of Sexual Difference, 1982, and J.E. 2, News, Toward a Culture of Difference, 1990. How did Neoplatonism become popular? Neoplatonism spread as the Roman Empire began to fall after the Emperor Marcus Aurelius. 121 to 180, who was a Stoic, died. While early Neoplatonism began under the Roman Empire, different forms of it persisted throughout the medieval period. The Renaissance, and into the 17th century. What is analytic ethics?
Analytic ethics is the application of both or either. Logical positivism and ordinary language analysis to ethics. Was the Vienna Circle an actual organization? Yes, it was a discussion group of scientists and philosophers in Vienna. Who held meetings from 1922 to 1938. Its members were highly influential in setting the subject matter of future analytic philosophy. Ethics, Political Philosophy, Philosophy of Science Philosophy of Language, Excluding Ordinary Language Philosophy, and Philosophy of Mind How does Martin Heidegger embarrass the Heideggerians? Heidegger's political beliefs and behavior when the Nazis came to power have generated much controversy. Based on the following documented facts. Heidegger paid dues as a member of the Enstap, or Nazi party, from 1933 to 1945. In his inaugural address. In May 1933 as rector of Freiburg University, three months after Hitler came to power. He called for the students and faculty to serve the new regime, referring to the march our people has begun into its future. History and to the power to preserve, in the deepest way, the strengths which are rooted in soil and blood. In June 1933, he told the Heidelberg Student Association that the university must be integrated into the Volksgemeinschaft, people's community, and be joined together with the state. In August 1933, he established the rule that the rector would no longer be elected by the faculty but appointed by the Nazi Minister of Education, a position to which he was himself appointed in October 1933. In November 1933, he applied the Nazi laws on racial cleansing to the students at Freiburg. Awarding financial aid to Aryan students, but not to Jews or Marxists. Heidegger also secretly denounced to the Nazi government a number of Jewish or politically suspect professors at Freiburg. Such as Hermann Stoudinger who won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1953, and Edouard Baumgarten. The pragmatist philosopher who was teaching at Göttingen. Max Muller, the Catholic intellectual, was fired by Heidegger as student leader and prevented from getting a lectureship. Edmund Husserl, 1859-1938, Heidegger's former teacher, was denied use of the university library at Freiburg because he was a Jew even though he had converted to Lutheranism. Heidegger and Husserl's intellectual relationship is examined in the film The Easter. Directed by David Barison and Daniel Ross in 2004. Although Heidegger resigned as rector in 1934. The next year he referred to the inner truth and greatness of National Socialism. At least until 1960, Heidegger maintained a friendly acquaintance with Eugen Fischer. The head of the Institute of Racial Hygiene in Berlin that employed the infamous Dr. Joseph Menschel as a researcher. Heidegger never repudiated Nazism after World War II. 
In his lecture on technology in 1949, he referred to the mechanism of agriculture. Saying, agriculture is now a motorized food industry in essence. The same as the manufacturing of corpses in the gas chambers and the extermination camps. The same as the blockade and starvation of the countryside, the same as the production of the hydrogen bombs. Many were offended by this comparison by Heidegger of murder Jews to agricultural products. In a last interview before his death, Heidegger described the main task of thought as achieving a satisfactory relationship to technology. He said that National Socialism had that goal but that those people were far too limited in their thinking to acquire an explicit relationship to what is really happening today and has been underway for three centuries. In other words, his greatest disappointment with the Nazis was their failure in addressing the problem of technology. What are some results of experimental philosophy? Thus far, Bertrand Russell's 1872 to 1970 theory of descriptions has failed. At least one intuitive test. Respondents are inclined to blame people for what they do unintentionally. Which, according to philosophers, they should not. Free will is also held to be compatible with determinism. Which philosophers have assumed not to be the case. What was Wilfred Seller's idea of functionalism? Wilfred Sellers, 1912-1989, introduced the concept in his 1956 paper, Empiricism and Philosophy of Mind. According to Sellers, there can be no mental foundations of knowledge such as sense data. And he also rejected the pragmatist's myth of the given. By the given, the pragmatists referred to that part of Experience that is not influenced by the perceiver or thinker. Functionalism, as developed by Sellers, as well as Hilary Putnam, 1926. In his early writings, is the thesis that mental states can be defined by three things. What causes them, their effects on other mental states, and their effects on behavior. That is, mental states can be understood in terms of their functions. Which operate like the software of a computer. What were Aquinas' views on science? As an Aristotelian, Thomas Aquinas, 1224-1274, believed that every object has its proper place. He also held the Eudoxian astronomical view that Earth was in the center of 49 to 53 concentric spheres. However, he thought that scientific conclusions required judgment and assessment so that all findings and reports should be considered and compared. He also believed that scientific information could be changed and revised. 
which is a strong tenet of modern empiricism. What is the story about Nagel and the spider? While Nagel was working in William James Hall at Harvard University one summer, he noticed a spider that lived in the men's urinal. Every time the urinal flushed, the poor arachnid would make a mad dash for its life so as not to drown. Nagel was concerned about what would happen to it when classes were in session and the urinal was flushed with greater frequency. After long and careful deliberation, Nagel decided to liberate the spider. He carefully removed it from the urinal with a paper towel and placed it in a corner of the room. At first the spider did not move, and Nagel assumed it was getting its bearings. He left town over a holiday weekend, and when he returned the poor spider had still not moved. It was quite dry and quite dead. Nagel recounts this episode in The View from Nowhere. 1986. His implication seems to be that even the greatest compassion and best intentions may miss their objective. Due to a lack of understanding of the circumstances of another. Lewis Hegelians apply their philosophy. The St. Louis Hegelians tried to apply their philosophy directly to current events. They were very proud of St. Louis. In contrast to Chicago, due to an error in the 1870 census, the St. Louis Hegelians, along with other residents of the city, were thrilled by the statistic that the population of St. Louis was greater than that of Chicago. On October 8, 1871, the day of the Great Chicago Fire, believed to have been started by a kick to a lamp from MRS. O'Leary's cow, although overall conditions were extremely dry and INF flammable. Snyder asked Brockmeyer what he thought of this disaster. Brockmeyer's reply, note, Snyder spelled Brockmeyer's name as Brockmeyer, according to Snyder, was. Chicago was the completely negative city of our West and indeed of our time. And now she has carried out her principle of negation to its final universal consequence, she has simply negated herself. The positive result of that negative is bound to arrive, but not over there in the same place again. But here, here in our St. Louis. But alas. The 1880 census put the population of St. Louis below that of Chicago. The St. Louis Philosophical Society hired a mathematician from Washington University to check the census figures. He told them that the 1870 census had been in error and that the population of St. Lewis really was 350,000 compared to 503,000 in Chicago. What have been the major themes and issues in African American philosophy? A 
Analyses of Racism, Questions About Racial Identity and questions about the reality of race are all important issues in African American philosophy. What was Pico della Mirandola known for? Giovanni Pico della Mirandola 1463-1494, is most famous for his oration on the dignity of man. Which was the introduction to his 900 theses, which he wrote in order to debate publicly in Rome. A papal commission censored 13 of the theses, but after Pico attempted to justify them with his apology. They were all condemned by Pope Innocent VIII. 1432-1492 Pico sought refuge in France, and after he was imprisoned there he went back home to Florence, where he continued his writing. He had a strong interest in the same hermetic tradition introduced by Ficino. Although he argued against part of it in his disputations against astrology. While Pico's oration on the dignity of man has been heralded as a classic example of Renaissance humanism. Pico believed that the dignity of man was located in his proper place in the cosmos. The freedom of man, which Pico is so famous for proclaiming, is thus not the freedom for human beings to create themselves or chart their own destinies but rather the traditional Christian freedom of being able to choose between good and evil as defined by Christianity. What was Williams James' main contribution to psychology? James developed the same theory that was independently developed by Carl George Lang, 1834-1900. The Danish physician and psychologist. It became known as the James Lang theory of the emotions. The theory is that emotions are our experience of changes in our bodies. Benedict de Spinoza, 1632-1677, had held that emotions are the effects of our beliefs, while René Descartes 1596-1650, in Passions of the Soul, 1649, had expressed an earlier version of the James Lang theory. Our common sense assumption is that emotions are reactions to events in the world that are mediated by our understanding. By contrast, the James Lang theory held that our bodies react directly to the world and our awareness of this physical reaction constitutes our emotions. What are some key facts about John Dewey's life and career? Dewey was born in 1859 in Burlington, Vermont, where his father was a grocer. He attended the University of Vermont and then taught classics, science, and algebra at a high school in Oil City, Pennsylvania, and then in Burlington, Vermont. Unsure of his future direction, but encouraged by former teachers. He applied to the new graduate program in philosophy at Johns Hopkins University but was turned down for a fellowship twice. Dewey finally borrowed $500 from an aunt to attend. 
he thereby became part of the first generation able to obtain PhDs in philosophy in the United States. Dewey's teachers at Johns Hopkins were philosophers George Sylvester Morris. 1840 to 1889, and Charles Sanders Peirce, 1839 to 1914, and psychologist G. Stanley Hall, 1844 to 1924. At first, Dewey was very interested in Hegelian ideas of organism, that the living being interacts with its environment. And that society is an organic whole that can be viewed as an organism. After writing a dissertation on Immanuel Kant, 1724-1804, he taught at the University of Michigan from 1884 to 1894. At this time he became interested in public education and progressive politics, as well as psychology. In 1894 Dewey became chair of the Department of Philosophy, Psychology, and Education at the University of Chicago. At Chicago, working with colleagues, he began to develop activist social theories. This resulted in the 1903 Studies in Logical Theory, which was dedicated to William James, 1842-1910. Dewey had a national reputation when he left Chicago for Columbia University. The Journal of Philosophy, published by the Columbia Philosophy Department, became an outlet for his ideas and a forum for discussion of them over the decades. Dewey lectured in Tokyo, Peking, and Nanking, and studied education in Turkey, Mexico, and Russia. In retirement, Dewey chaired the 1937 Mexican Commission investigating charges against Russian revolutionary Leon Trotsky, which produced a report, not guilty. He also defended Bertrand Russell in 1941, when Russell was denied a teaching opportunity at City College, New York, because of his political ideas. Who was George Berkeley? George Berkeley, 1685-1753, was the founder of modern idealism. Unlike his 17th century idealist predecessors, such as Nicholas Malebranche, 1638-1715, or Gottfried Leibniz, 1647-1716, he was not a rationalist. Berkeley was completely comfortable with science and empiricism in general. And he significantly weighs in with the great triumvirate of British empiricists. John Locke, 1632-1704, George Berkeley, 1685 to 1783 and David Hume 1711 to 1776 Berkeley was born in County Kilkenny in Ireland where he went to Kilkenny College for 4 years beginning at age 11 he then went to Trinity College in Dublin and was elected a fellow there in 1707 holding the position until 1724. His first book, An Essay Towards a New Theory of Vision, was published in 1709, followed by the treatise Concerning the Principles of Human Knowledge in 1710. In 1713, he moved to London and published three dialogues between Hylas and Philonas, the first of his works to be well received. He was presented to Queen Anne by the renowned essayist and satirist Jonathan Swift. 
1667-1745, and became friends with the literary elite of that time. In 1713, Berkeley traveled to Sicily as chaplain to the ambassador. His next position was as a tutor to St. George Ash, the Bishop of Derry, which involved further travel in Europe. He then wrote De Motu, on motion, in 1721, as well as an essay towards preventing the ruin of Great Britain in which he argued that a recent financial crisis, the South Sea Island bubble, which was a stock market crash that resulted from over-speculation, was the result of a decline in religion and morals. In 1723 he received a windfall inheritance from Esther van Humry, an Irish woman of Dutch descent who was a long-time correspondent and lover of Jonathan Swift, who called her Vanessa in his poetry. Berkeley claimed that she was a perfect stranger. In 1724 Berkeley was appointed Dean of Derry, which provided him financial security. But his dream was to found a Christian college in Bermuda that would admit Negroes and Indians, as well as white Americans. He raised money for the project, but not enough for it to become a reality. The British Parliament awarded him £20,000, but that money never came through. Berkeley married in 1728 and he and his wife, Anne, went to Rhode Island to set up farms to grow food for the prospective college. They remained there for three years, and then returned to live in London. He defended Christianity in the Minute Philosopher in 1732, and claimed that mathematics was more mysterious than religion in the Analyst in 1734. That same year, he became Bishop of Cloyne, which led him to move back to Ireland where he remained until he died in 1753, while visiting his son at Oxford University. Why has Noam Chomsky's theory of language been so influential? Chomsky's principle of a universal grammar is compatible with materialism. It entails that the mind can be scientifically studied like a natural phenomenon. Moreover, the output of speakers can be used as data from which to infer deeper linguistic structures than those evident in spoken language. Insofar as language is an important, if not primary, mental activity. The idea of innate physical structures determining language production has implications for understanding other mental functions. Chomsky's work in linguistics has had a strong influence. On the philosopher of mind Jerry Fodor, 1935, for example. Who was Gilbert Ryle and what was his thesis? Gilbert Ryle, 1900-1976, was the Oxford philosophy professor who edited the journal Mind after G. E. Moore, 1873-1958. He is famous for having conclusively taken philosophers to task for talking about the mind as though it were the ghost in the machine. He attacked the lingering Cartesian idea of the mind as a non-physical 
entity related to the body in ways that could not be explained. Instead, he said statements that were about the mind should be viewed as meaningful. Only if they could be explained in terms of actual behavior or behavioral tendencies. Did the study of some of the sciences get their start in philosophy? Yes. Until the end of the 17th century, the physical sciences were called natural philosophy. And until the 19th century there were no social sciences. Social science work was done under the name of philosophy. Many sciences have their roots in philosophical debates. Western science began with the pre-Socratics in the 7th century BCE. The pre-Socratics were the first Westerners in recorded history to think about the world using reason instead of myth. Much later, Western science got another big boost from Isaac Newton, 1643 to 1727, who practiced what was then called natural philosophy and persists to this day as physics. Chemistry also got its start through philosophical inquiry by Newton's contemporary Robert Boyle, 1627 to 1691. In the early 20th century, the philosopher William James 1842-1910, founded the science of psychology. And in the middle of the 20th century, Noam Chomsky, 1928 combined philosophy with linguistics to get the new field of cognitive science started. There are similar origins in the social sciences. Ideals of government and forms of government topics now falling into the category of political science were first theorized by philosophers such as Plato. C428 C348 BCE, Aristotle, 384-322 BCE, Thomas Aquinas. C1225 to 1274, Thomas Hobbes, 1588 to 1679, John Locke, 1632 to 1704, and John Stuart Mill, 1806 to 1873. Karl Marx, 1818 to 1883, who is credited with developing the theoretical foundation of communism and socialism. Modified the ideas of philosopher George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, 1770-1831. The first systematic historian was a philosopher, Giovanni Battista, Guy Ambattista, Vico. Also Vico, 1668-1744, as was the first sociologist, the philosophical positivist Augusta Comte. Full name, Isadora Marie Augusta Francois Xavier Comte, 1798-1857. And the philosopher Immanuel Kant, 1724-1804, is usually credited with having founded anthropology. In the 20th century, social movements have received valuable inspiration from the work of philosophers. For instance, the women's movement from Simone de Beauvoir, 1908 to 1986, the civil rights movement from W.E.B. Dubois, 1868 to 1963, the animal rights movement from Peter Singer, 1946, and the environmental preservation movement from Arne Nice, 1912 to 2009, who introduced the term deep ecology.
How do we know the one? Plot Inus, 205 to 270, taught that the soul can know the one by becoming one with it. Which he called ecstasy, surrender, simplicity, touching, or flight of the alone to the alone. This reascension of the soul, which has been described as a union with God. In the Christian sense, was experienced many times by Plot Inus. To prepare for it, Neoplatonists practiced virtues and Platonic dialectics, which included the study of mathematics. <laughs>